Hello, everyone. I'm Charles Laughlin. I'm Senior Vice President of BIA Kelsey, and I'm here with uh, Mike Boland, who's our Vice President of Content. Mike, how are you doing today? Hi, Charlie. Okay, so we're going to do an analyst roundtable today, just the two of us, and we're going to talk about two companies in the local digital media space that begin with Y. We're going to start out with Yelp, and then we're going to talk a little bit about some uh, announcements and recent developments at YP. So we're going to start with you, Mike. Yelp has uh, come out with something following the footsteps of Vine and Instagram with short-form video. Why don't you tell us what that's all about? Sure. So what they did was they announced this week in advance of their quarterly earnings that they're going to add video to their mobile app. So basically what that means is users will be able to shoot and share 3 to 12 second videos. Um, so you can think of it, yes, like Vine or Instagram video, which are 6 seconds and 15 seconds respectively. And there are a couple points basically to make there. First, in a bit of a self-serving mode, we called this over a year ago in, in a blog post that they would kind of build or buy this type of thing. But to be honest, it wasn't some grand prophecy because you know all the trends – we're aligning for this to happen. It was just a matter of time. So a couple important trends. One, you know, we're in the age of social sharing. Vine, Instagram, sharing multimedia, captured via smartphone. It's a pretty common use case these days, especially among younger generations. And better mobile hardware and optics and connectivity are all just enabling and fueling this. So that's the first trend. The second one that gets into the kind of business side of things is that we're very much in the age of content marketing. Um, we just put out a paper on this topic. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways that that applies to SMBs is to capture the words and the multimedia that are happening in and around their locations and to join that conversation or amplify some of the positive stuff that's being you know shared um, so we talk to companies like closely and moment feed a lot that do this very thing and they tell us that Instagram is actually the fastest growing medium for social activity happening in and around local businesses so you know that's just one point of evidence that this age of social sharing and multimedia mentioned in point one feeds right into some of the good kind of business implications so for Yelp particularly it's fitting because you know its biggest category is restaurants mm -hmm. and that happens to be a venue and a context that's very conducive to capturing and sharing moments or ambiance and you know currently 40 percent of its reviews are contributed via mobile so users already have their phones out um, so for multimedia, we're talking about pictures of food or video or right. social get-togethers. And it's just a ripe environment for lots of social sharing. And it happens to fit right into Yelp's existing monetization structure. So I think it's a very mm -hmm. logical play. Yeah, so talk about that a little more. How does this advance the Yelp business? Yeah. So you know, Yelp's business model, we're often asked about this, is essentially to hook SMBs in with lots of free features like claiming their listings and being able to do lots of things with that, such as respond to reviews and see analytics and then they try to upsell from there to the paid tier where one of the kind of hooks is um, you know multimedia the ability to create slideshows and stuff like that so I see the incorporation of video and they haven't announced this this is just kind of our, our speculation that the video will be the next step into paid offerings for SMBs to you know select certain videos distribute them give them top billing within their their profile or or even shoot their own video and I think that's going to be a key for Yelp to continue to differentiate and maintain revenue growth which has been pretty solid actually shown most recently by its uh, earnings announced this week uh, the quick thumbnail there is that it has eight, 89 million in quarterly revenues which is a 61 percent year-over-year growth um, and notably this past quarter it was their most uh, or their first profitable quarter um, in their existence with 2.7 million in, in net income um, so we're going to keep watching Yelp closely. A lot, lot to be developed here, and we're actually going to be interviewing them at our upcoming SMB Digital Marketing Conference uh, next month. Uh, but I'll, I'll stop there and kick it back to you, Charlie, because you sure. did an interesting blog post uh, uncovering some great stuff about YP and some right. things that they revealed this this week. Yeah, there was two things, and they're not necessarily related, but they're both very interesting. Uh, the first was that uh, uh, that they were at a run rate of about four hundred million. Um, in uh, Mowax, I believe they said 400 million of uh, mobile revenue in 2013, mm -hmm. uh, out of roughly a billion in total digital revenue. So, you know, not that good of math, but I can tell you that's about 40 percent right. of uh, digital revenue that is uh, from mobile. And if you look at, if you get a little context to that, within, if you want to just compare them to peer companies that are sort of legacy YP, Yellow Pages companies, which YP is. Even though it's evolved considerably beyond that, um, a company called Enero in the Nordic regions up in Scandinavia, which was a very early uh, mover in terms of monetizing mobile, 
Uh, they were one of the earliest ones to have like a mobile optimized presence product and so on. Uh, they do about, I, the math I did yesterday is about 18% of their digital revenue, 13% of total revenue, and their share of total revenue from digital is much, much higher um, compared to YP's 40%. And so that makes that YP number even more compelling, I think. And, you know, we can talk a little bit about why that is. Um, you know, obviously, I think we were talking a little bit before we came on here, and I think one of the reasons is that you can't get there necessarily just by, you know, launching an app, even if it's a great one. Um, you really have to get there through uh, through developing an ad network, and that's what YP has done. They've developed a robust local mobile ad network, and that is probably, we don't know what the breakdown between O and O revenue, you know, from the from the app versus network revenue is, but I would presume that the network is a pretty big contributor to that number. That's and probably is yeah, and, that's and a guess, but that's a, probably an educated guess. It's commendable, too, in that um, it's a tough pill to swallow to start to build out that network. First of all, the, you know, the, the work and time to do it, but also, um, obviously, w when you're not in an O&O &O structure, it's a rev share. Um, you, you're, you're trading margin for growth. Yes, you know, exactly. Uh, so interesting yeah. stuff, yeah. Mm -hmm. And there was one more piece I just want to mention that was we wrote about um, uh, sort of the second tier of that post I, I did yesterday, which is that, um, YP has brought in somebody named uh, Jack Krecker, who is a, uh, uh, he's not an exec from the Yellow Pages or the local search industry, um, but he's been brought in to uh, basically be president of the print product, the president of a, a print-only group within YP. So what they're doing is they're building a organization that is solely focused on their, you know, traditional product. Though it's important to note that it's not a segmentation of the sales force around products, but merely around the product development piece. But nonetheless, that's a significant development. Um, and it's also in keeping with some things going around around the industry where companies are doing more and more segmentation by product line in order to give you know the growth business more focus, give the traditional business maybe more focus to, to sort of see it down the, the, uh, uh, the back nine of its career you know, in a more... Uh, 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 efficient and, and effective way. The interesting theme I'm detecting here too is that partitioning of business units in order to have that focus and in order to get away with some of the legacy inertia is precisely the reason I believe that YP was able to reach the milestones you mentioned earlier yeah. um, in, in building out a network and doing all that great stuff because they literally have a physical separation of you know what used to be AT&T Interactive in Glendale right. now is YP. It, it says a lot about that kind of uh, partitioning organizationally. Right, right. Well, I mean, uh, Frecker will be, I believe, headquartered in Atlanta, which uh -huh. is really basically the locus the, of the, the print legacy core from legacy South. operation yeah. uh, is there, whereas the digital operation is largely a West Coast uh, animal. Mm -hmm. And there's probably something to be learned from that as well. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, I think we'll end it there. And uh, those are two very important companies with some very interesting developments uh, very recently. And thanks, Mike, for joining us and telling us about Yelp today. And uh, thanks to all who uh, watched this uh, edition of the BIA Kelsey Analyst Roundtable. Until next time, thanks.